Thank you. <laughs> um, cool. Yes. Yeah, so good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you so much for coming to Be More Beautiful screening and public health workshop. Um, so as you can see, we have two amazing speakers lined up for you tonight, and um, we'll jump right in. So um, yeah, just before we get started, I want to let everyone know that like I was saying, this meeting's being recorded. I'll send it out to everyone. Um, please keep yourself on mute while speakers are giving their presentation. And um, we'll have a question and answer session after each speaker presents. But if you have questions in the meantime, you can put them in the chat and I'll kind of just monitor that. Um, so first we have Dr. Kristen Mamari, who is an associate professor in the department of Population, Family, and Reproductive Health at John Hopkins Bloomberg School for Public Health um, with a degree in medical anthropology and a doctorate in international health. Dr. Mamari has been extensively trained in cross-cultural research, qualitative methods and analysis and program evaluation. Um, throughout her career, Dr. Mamari has focused her work on vulnerable adolescent populations both domestically and internationally. Currently, Dr. Mamari is a principal investigator of Project Vital, a four-year study that brings together researchers and practitioners from a variety of different disciplines to examine the impact of restoring vacant lots on reducing adolescent health disparities in Baltimore City. Um, so welcome, thanks for being here, Kristen, and um, I will pull up your presentation now. Thank you so much. And it is wonderful to um, be here and to share our my study. Um, there are many people that probably some of you might know um, that are part of the study. So for example, Natasha Neal and Brandy Walsh, and I've got some folks from DPW and um, Parks and People, um, Baltimore Green Space that are all part of this study. And I think what makes this study unique is that it's not only just researchers, but it's um, program folks, it's um, policymakers, and we also have a thriving young, um, a young person a youth advisory board that we just developed. So, um, so I'm really excited to share this study and um, you'll be hearing in a little bit from Lisa, who we also worked with on one aspect of this study. That was really just an, an amazing experience. And so I can share that with you all in a little bit. But um, just to give you a, a background, so this study is, is about um, vacant lots improvements to the transform adolescent lives. Um, so next slide. And really where, when I started to get interested in this topic, I was really interested in a lot of research that had been done among adults and there have been a, 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 a lot of studies actually right now that have shown that people living near vacant lots and abandoned buildings have poor health. And this is particularly true in terms of mental health. Um, we see violence and crime in the news here in Baltimore City. We've seen a lot of news articles about fires and crime um, by abandoned buildings. But what's, what's been interesting is that there's been this growing evidence that has shown that when vacant lots are green and restored, it actually can improve the physical and mental health of nearby residents. And there was a big study that was done in Philadelphia a couple of years ago that showed dramatic decreases in mental health as well as gun violence. And so I started to look at this really in Baltimore and I'm, as a, I'm an adolescent health researcher. And so I'm really particularly interested in, in things that we can do to improve the lives of adolescents. And so I started looking at this research and I found there really wasn't a whole lot um, on adolescents. And this was kind of surprising for me because first of all, we know that adolescents spend a lot more time in the neighborhoods compared to adults. And there's also been some research to show that adolescents have a very different idea of what they like and what they don't like in their neighborhoods compared to um, adults. And so this got me thinking about, I wonder what we could do here in Baltimore to see about some of the greening efforts that have been underway and to see whether we can see any health impacts from that. So next slide. So just currently to give you a sense of this, Baltimore City right now has 18,000 vacant lots and an additional 17,000 abandoned buildings. 
There's about 900 um, vacant lots that have been green to date, and this is continuously growing. But one of the interesting things is that the restoration efforts are very varied. So you can have lots that just involve mowing and trash pickup. You can have community gardens. There could be raised flower beds and tree planting as well as art murals. And then there's also community programs going on. So one of the things I was interested in is, is to look at, well, does it matter? Do you have to have art murals to see any health impact? Do you have to have community gardens to see anything? And so as the city and, and more NGOs are getting involved in greening, I thought understanding these things would be really important so we know how to go forward. Next slide. So as part of this, I got a um, four-year award from Hopkins. It's a new type of funding initiative and it stands for Support for Creative Integrative Basic and Applied Research or otherwise known as CYBAR. And so the overall goal with this um, award is to determine whether vacant lot restoration strategies can reduce any adolescent health disparities in Baltimore. And if so, what type of restoration works best? So for example, what I just said, do we need to do community gardens to see any impact? And who does it work for the best? Do you have to live right next to the lot or do you have to be involved in the greening? Those are some of the things that we wanna look at with this study. So to get to this goal or to reach our goal, we have four objectives. And the first is to build this um, shareable database of all the characteristics of restored and unrestored vacant lots. And the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicator Alliance, so Binia, is a key partner, and they are the ones that are actually um, helping us to build this database. Um, and then what we'd like to do is do a mixed method, so do both qualitative and quantitative data collection to look at the effect that living next to one of these restored vacant lots has on adolescent health. And then within that, we'd like to do a, a cost effectiveness study to determine the impact of these different restoration activities on youth crime and violence, mental health and food insecurity to really look at the cost and see does that cost um, if, if you do more cost, does that give you better health out outcomes? Do you do little? Um, will you also see health outcomes? So we want to be able to look at that. And then finally, at the end, we hope to develop and disseminate a blueprint for how we can reduce adolescent health disparities um, through restoration activities. And with this award, we thought we could look at, depending on what we find, the extent to which some of these things can, adapted, can be adapted to other similar types of municipalities that are also having a large number of vacant lots. So next slide. So a little bit about our study. Um, there's three main outcomes that we're interested in, and that is violence, perpetration, and victimization, mental health problems, so symptoms of depression, anxiety, and trauma, as well as positive mental health outcomes, so hope and happiness, and food insecurity. And the reason why we chose the outcomes is because there is a lot of research um, in the adolescent health literature that the neighborhood effects are related to each of these things. And so we thought then that that would be appropriate to look at for this study. Um, we are hoping to do this study among um, 750 adolescents ages 14 and 19. And we're hoping to be um, to survey them at least twice. We're hoping we can do it actually in three times over the course, course of four years. We'd like to recruit adolescents um, in areas where we have sufficient lot density. So we have to, we're, as part of the database, we're looking at kind of where these levels of greening are. And then also we have to have adolescents that live next to them. So we hope to use the census data to be able to help us um, identify those areas where at least 25% of the households have adolescents. And then in addition, as I said, we were doing mixed methods. So we'd like to also do in-depth interviews among adolescents um, living next to these lots. And we'd like to interview adolescents living next to different types of greening. So those that live next to maybe just lots that are doing mowing and trash pickup, and those that are doing more extensive types to see kind of what difference they see um, in their mind with regards to their health. Okay, next slide. So our team is, a, is an amazing team, as I mentioned at the beginning. We have researchers across four different departments at Hopkins, the University of Maryland, I already mentioned the Baltimore Neighborhoods Indicators Alliance, 
University of Baltimore, um, and then the USDA Forest Service. And we also have a number of state and local agencies, as I mentioned, so Baltimore Office of Sustainability, DPW, Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development, and then um, a number of greening organizations. So Baltimore Green Space, Parks and People, Civics Works, and then we had the National Recreation and Parks Association. So um, a really diverse group, and um, it's been really wonderful just getting to know uh, um, everyone on our team, as well as all the different disciplines that are represented in our team. Next slide. So one of the things that we did at the beginning, too, is we developed a theory of change for what we think um, how greening can make a difference in health outcomes. And I don't have the whole thing on this um, slide because it was too big, but it just to shows that show you here that these greening activities are actually embedded in some broader macro level forces um, that have to do with historical conditions and um, the built environment, the social environment and the different no neighborhood contexts that all relate to how these greening activities are gonna create change. And so we hope to explore some of these things with our study. Um, so next slide. So what have we done so far? And we can go to the next slide. Well, first is just, this gives you um, a sense of kind of all, all the different teams. One of the things that we, we did was with our broad team is divide us into different working groups here. And you can see, these are all the different types. And, and at the front, as you can see, youth engagement is a big part and it feeds into all of the different aspects of that, of our study, which is very important. Um, so next slide. And like I said, we, we have developed this database. I can show you a website um, after I get done and all of you can check it out. Um, but so far we've, we've seen data from Baltimore Green Space, the Chesapeake Bay Trust, Center for Livable Future, Parks and People, the City of Baltimore, BMART Beautiful, Carol Lots and Civics Works. Um, there is, if anybody here actually does have greening data and is not one part of um, one of these organizations, there actually is um, a link on our website where you can upload greening data. Um, and it's very easy and I, I can show you if I have any time, but there's a way for anybody to upload greening data onto the database. And we really hope to make this shareable and usable across Baltimore City. So next slide. And one of the things that we did um, with Lisa, who's gonna be talking after me, is we did do some observations of green lots to get a, a sense again about what the quality is, what the different types of greening exists. Um, so what we did is from our database, we had a total of 222 lots that were mapped and assigned to, to 11 different observation teams. And what was really great, I thought, was that uh, we had young people from Lisa's group, Let's Thrive Baltimore, and then another group that was involved with um, greening, um, called Go, Grow Baltimore. Um, I don't know if anybody here knows Michael Dorsey, but he had also a group of, of young people. And so we paired young people, each with a uh, Johns Hopkins grad student, and they formed a pair to do these lot observations. And so each one did observations using a tablet, and then they took photos of a lot and rated the lot. Um, so next slide, I can kind of show you what we found. This is just some um, observation pictures or pictures of the observations. Um, it was a very cold and blustery day, but um, I give all these guys credit because they, they worked through it. Um, next slide. So what we found, just to give you an, a, a sample, is first of all, um, it was interesting to note that of the, rate, the lots that were um, rated excellent, a lot of them had lighting, um, grass, you can see fencing was in most of them. They had seating, um, trees. So it just kind of gives you a sense of what features were important um, in regards to how they rated the lots. And obviously those that were rated poor, much higher in terms of trash um, in the lots. And then one of the interesting things that we did too is we compared um, the ratings given by the young people versus the Hopkins grad student. And you can see they were fairly consistent but um, interesting, the young people were more likely to rate the lots as being a little bit higher quality than the grad students. So that just shows you again, what I said earlier is that oftentimes 
young people have different ideas and notions of what they consider they like and they don't like versus adults. Okay, next slide. And this just gives you a sense of, of what these lots were that were rated as poor. And so you can see that some of the adjectives that they gave to them. Um, so this one um, was called poor and they called it crestfallen. And there was another one um, in the middle. Um, it was classified as an empty, un unkept lot. It was and also described as being unhappy. Um, there was another one, the one to the, um, the right, which was interesting because it looked clean and they actually classified it as clean, but the um, young person described it as being bored. Um, so next slide, and just to compare with those that were rated excellent, you can see here the differences here. So um, most of these excellent um, photos or the lots that were ranked as excellent had more things in there um, or were seen as being calming. So for example, the one on the left, um, the comment was it was great, it was a good place to come and spend some time, very well taken care of, there was even a barbecue area. And then in the one in the middle was, was um, labeled as being relaxed, it was a cleaned open space with fencing. And then um, the one on the right was a cleaned open space um, and a community garden there, and that was labeled as being calming. So just to give you a sense of, of kind of the differences. So again, what we hope to do then is, is to launch our survey in May, and um, we've upped our sample size now to a thousand um, because we'd like to do some more analysis. Um, and we hope to also do three surveys over time. Um, we're trying to see if we have the budget, but that's so far what we'd like to do. And, and basically we're going to be looking at adolescents who live next to green lots versus those that um, live next to vacant lots that have not yet been greened. Um, and I already talked about how we're gonna select the participants. So you can go to the next slide. And then um, just a little bit about youth engagement. Um, we created a youth advisory board last year and they really helped us to develop our survey. And then as I already mentioned with the observations, we um, work with Grow Home Baltimore and Let's Thrive with the observations and Lisa can speak to that more. Um, and right now we've created a new youth advisory board and they're helping us to test the survey and they're helping us create recruitment materials. They're very interested in learning how to do research. And so what we want them to do is just to tell us, what would you like to learn? And we hope to be really um, responsive to their interests. And, and so, so far we have a really great group of young people that we're working with. And I should add that Natasha Neal and Brandy Welsh have been instrumental in developing this um, youth advisory board. So next slide. And then, as I said, this is our website. And if you click on that, then you can not only hear more about Project Vital, but as I mentioned, there's a map there um, and you can see the link to the map of our database. And then within that, if there is anybody here that does have any greening data and it's not on the map, there is a way to upload that. And again, once we get this finalized, we hope to share it widely with, um, researchers, um, people um, interested in greening, anybody really in Baltimore City. We want this to be um, very user-friendly and, um, and widely used. So that's our goal. And next slide. I think I'm done. Yeah. And this is just um, our team right here. So I want to thank you all and um, would be happy to take any questions. Oh, shoot, I didn't even know I was off of me <laughs> all that time. Uh, Y'all heard my phone going off. Oh, Lord. Uh, Thank you, Christian. That was awesome. Um, and um, I, I appreciate the, the presentation and the, the data. Um, from. I would love to get a copy of that. That is You awesome. are going to get a copy of it. Yeah, yes, we're still cleaning through it. But yeah. Yes, uh -huh. I didn't know y'all was finished. Um, we're not you finished. Know, yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Yes, but whatever you can share, I would appreciate it so I can share it with the team. Um, so thank you. No, that was amazing. Thank you for the presentation. Oh, you are most welcome. And it was so fun. I have to say that um, the, your your group uh, and Michael's group was just, they were amazing kids. And they just, um, it was so fun to see at the end 
the Johns Hopkins students hugging the young people um, and exchanging contacts. It was just yeah. so thrilling to see that. Yeah, I loved it. They were excited. I see there's a question, Joanne. Hi, um, thank you for taking my question. Um, start with the statement. Um, <clears throat> It seems like uh, Neighborhood Design Center had some similar um, research done, and I wondered if you had connected with them about uh, lots and, and greening and activities relative to that. Um, I wanted to make you aware of the Landscape Architecture Foundation has uh, on their website, it's been an effort to define quantitative value to um, open space improvements. I'm a landscape architect, by the way. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and um, so put that, those qualitative things and quantitative as you are trying to do as part of projects and then define the value associated. So ecological services provided by um, various projects, implementations across the board. They could be parks, they could be streetscapes, they could be a, a variety of project types. So that um, could be maybe some other grant sourcing for you as well. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, bringing together sciences, arts, community members of all types is, is very exciting to me to, to hear this and everybody working together and then youth. And then I wanted to top it off with an, an interest of, I've had the pleasure of working on some Baltimore City public school projects. And my goal and interest is to tie the value that you're putting, that you're linking mental health, youth health improvement to open space and the quality of that to schools to then create citywide, a nation, you know, a statewide minimum standard for qualitative green open spaces, learning spaces for schools. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, um, since theoretically kids should be spending a bunch of time in schools or at schools, um, if that's another offshoot of that. And um, I was horrified to learn that no middle schoolers in Baltimore City ever do go outside during the school day. It's once they get in the building and then they're released at the end of the day. So um, that's that's a personal interest of mine and would I'm just would love to um, tie into some of your research because educators have to address a broad spectrum of learning abilities. And um, with the adoption of 21st century learning, that learning in different environment types would seem to be integral to the, the um, physical development, mental development of the children, and um, also environments that help them learn better from where you know, from what's at the core of that helps them. Mm -hmm. So there's probably more statements than questions, but I'm really excited about your, your work. I'm excited about this group that you've got together and I'm uh, looking forward to more. And uh, one other piece, there's, um, there's a Green School Yards of America that to my, my passion of creating a minimum standard for schools and green spaces for that intent of learning outcomes that um, maybe there's some other research that can tie into what you're doing and then everybody working together. I, I love that idea. And one of the things that I've learned is that there is so much in this space. And, and so one of the other goals that I'd like to do is is to create a learning collaborative among everybody who's doing similar type of research because a lot of there's there's so many things happening and we rarely get together to be able to talk, share our findings, ask folks, what does this mean? Oh, this could be done this way. And 
And, and so I've also been working with, um, I don't know if you know, Ashley Trout um, with the greater. Okay, so you can talk to him because he's actually starting, we're, we're in the works of thinking about how to develop some kind of large symposium of bringing all kinds of people that are involved in this field together and to think of ways of making sure we're not duplicating efforts, but we're just sharing and collaborating with each other. So, um, and then with regards to your school um, um, interest, there is somebody, and I forgot his last name, Terrence. Um, he is a kindergarten teacher and uh, I Ashley would also know him, but if you know Morgan Grove of the USDA Forest Service, Okay, he would know who this person is, just mentioned Terrence, but he has started a kindergarten program with exactly kind of what you're thinking of and he wants to expand, but trying to think of ways to bring young children to learn outside in the classroom and what are some of those ways. So he's been asking me about my research as well and how we can work together. So I think that's another pathway for you. Um, and again, it's it's, these similar interests coming together and to making sure that we're all connected, sharing what we know and, and helping to build this work. Um, so that's the, those are some other folks that, um, again, that I'm just learning about and we're trying to grow this learning, some kind of learning collaborative. We don't know what we wanna call it, but just a way to make sure that we are sharing our, our knowledge. Oh, and um, I'm, I was thrilled to see the difference in responses to the, um, the sites, because that's been um, <clears throat> a learning opportunity in me. I look at a wooded area and I think, what a beautiful space. And then other people that their experience would be, oh, that's a scary space. Mm -hmm. And um, so that that background and experience also informed how uh, people would see that and perceive it or potentially use it. And I'm taking up too much time, but I'm so excited. <laughs> thank you. That's what happens. I love it when we when we connect like that. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing. And I see Georgia also said that she's working on a similar project, Quad Cities area. It's called Growing Space. So Georgia, I'd love to also hear more. So thank you for sharing. And I see Audrey. Hi. Um. Hello. Um. Thank you. This is. A, I'm sorry. Um. I'm in the middle of taking my grandson to basketball too just now. So, but okay. um, I'm so interested in this because um, I'm piggybacking on what you said about the kindergarten teacher. Yeah. And then also what she said about the uh, other uh, uh, students just bringing it to, to the classes. And I actually did that in my kindergarten class where we actually had a garden took them out, oh. they were planting, digging, and, and we grew corn and all sorts of stuff. And we had uh, reading projects in the, um, in our garden and, and I put, well, I put pumpkins in the garden for them to, to do a pumpkin patch hunt, you know, kind of thing, but I put them in there. But um, <laughs> it was great. Um, and so I also ex try to extend that, like you were saying about the middle schoolers, they don't get to go out as much, but um, I would love to uh, kind of be a part of this. I know you were doing a lot of research. Another young uh, lady was saying um, her youth work with um, you in doing projects. And so my question was about how old were the um, the youth that are involved with this project? And do you like uh, select schools to do this or just groups of young people just be a part of this? Yeah, thank you. So I, I wanna say it was really Natasha Neal and Brandy Welsh who really helped form the groups and they reached out to first some school um, contacts and then um, through their own types of connections. And then we got adolescents, we wanted to have adolescents within our target population. So anywhere between 14 and 19 is, is really what we're looking at is in terms of our age. So, um, so we have about five, six young people right now, and that could grow that one of the things about this population is like at la last year, we had a youth advisory board, but they all graduated. And so that's the trouble is so we often have to update, but um, yeah, we're, we're look, always looking for um, more involvement because we really want them to be at the center. We wanna make sure that what we're doing aligns with what they um, want. So just to give you one example from our youth advisory board last year, when we were talking about the survey, 
uh, one of the young people said, well, how are you going to do this? I said, well, we were thinking, you know, we would go once we know the areas um, that we're going to work in, we would go and knock on the houses. And she said, nope. No, that's not what you do. You go into the middle of the neighborhood, you bring food, you have youth sign in. And, and so it was wonderful because she was basically giving us advice, the best way to do that. And that's what we want. We want them to really lead us. And, and that's important to us. So that's how we're doing it. Great. Because I, um, I know Natasha and uh, um, Brandy. So what, what we do a, a youth works program uh, with them would be more beautiful. Oh, so I yeah. uh, would love to get, and, they, and our group is uh, roughly 13 and 19 year olds. So I would love to get them a, a part of this and doing more. I'm going to say more, not, not just planning things, but really learning the concept of the health part of it or the mental health part of it. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I would definitely, I don't know how, how I can, I guess just you said talk to Natasha and Brandy yeah, about it. Yeah. Natasha okay. and Brandy are, are really my, um, they're the they're the guru ladies that are that are reaching out and finding the young people for me. So yeah. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. My pleasure and great to talk to you. Keep up the great work. Okay, I love all these exciting connections that are being made. Um, Georgia, do you want to say anything about your project before we move to the next presentation or? Um, thank you. I, I don't want to take up too much time, but I, it was just interesting to me to hear what Joanne had said, because I feel so passionately, I just feel so much like how she feels. Um, so I'm just currently trying to get a project mobilized um, in my area, trying to provide a space for our community that not only addresses local food insecurity issues, but also can help provide a space for growth like that supports development of children ages zero to five um, pregnant women and their families and so that's just something that I've been working on and I've gotten quite a few people on board and it's it's happening pretty quickly and it's really exciting but thank you I'm just excited to be here and I would love to connect with Kristen and Joanne just for um, just insight on the project um, I've developed quite a bit already, but any support I could get or advice, I, I would just love to connect with you guys. Thank you for letting me share that with you guys. Oh, my pleasure. And it sounds wonderful. So yeah, I'd love to connect after. Maybe um, if people want to like share contacts, like in the chat, feel free to do that. And I can also send out the contacts of the presenters after as well. Um, but yay, thank you so much, Georgia. And thank you for everybody and your amazing questions. Um, great. And thank you, Kristen, for the amazing presentation, of course. Um, so next up, we have Lisa Mullock, um, Chief Executive Director of Let's Thrive Baltimore. Um, founded in 2016, Let's Thrive Baltimore started as a small community organization to help Baltimore youth and families who had been impacted by gun violence through offering therapeutic programs and service days. Um, in the past four years, they have grown exponentially running projects, including mentoring, job programs, um, support groups, financial literacy, career consulting, um, housing, rental cash assistance for survivors of violence, um, cleaning and greening projects in the city, um, in addition to, I'm sure, more things that I missed. Um, and their mission is to provide overall community support strategies and awareness for families impacted by trauma in Baltimore. Um, so thank you so much, Lisa, for being here and um, I'll hand it over to you and I'll pull up your presentation. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all for being here. And um, I just wanna say, again, I really enjoyed that, Christian. We, you guys will see that me and Christian is kinda opposite but opposites work good together she does the research I do the work right so I get the research from Christian and we apply it to the work that we do so that's why I'm so excited to be on here um what we kind of focus on is healing the healing aspect of gardening for our survivors and crime prevention through environmental design because what we want to do is we want to 
reduce crime to prevent other families from going through what we went through. Um, I lost the love of my life of 17 years to gun violence in Baltimore City. I lost my goddaughter in a triple homicide in, in Baltimore City. And then my, least, my niece back in 2020 during COVID um, in Baltimore City due to gun violence. So I had just got this newfound love, um, a place of peace from gardening. And the young people um, that actually care for the garden, they love gardening. Um, this is their place where they go to heal. Um, this is the place where they go to kind of escape the reality. So this was the blueprint part of what you're looking at now of the transformation that uh, my young people, and I have one of my youth on here right now. He's one of my youth leaders, James. So thank you for being on here, James. I really value um, the young people that I work with because, you know, they come up with these amazing ideas and we just help them put it together and they implement it. And um, 10 of my youth actually worked with Christian. We had about 10, 10 of our young people out there that actually uh, worked with the group of young people. And I appreciate how they partnered the youth with the John Hopkins grade. And as Christian said, they loved it. They enjoyed it. But you can go to the next photo. I don't know what order we're in, but I'm hoping we're in the same order I set them in. Okay, this is, okay, can you do one at a time or you put them all together? Um, they're all put together. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. So what you're looking at here, um, if you look to the left, can you kind of zoom in on the very first one on the left? If that's possible. Uh -oh. Um, sorry, I think I switched slides. I don't think I can. I can use my mouse to kind of highlight things, though. I'm so sorry. Okay, over here where it's where it's where you see the, the trash and um where where the trash is piled up at. You guys see that over there. This is how the area looked when we first um started creating to come to the community to. Uh, the youth map, this area is, actually sits directly across from four schools. One is an elementary school, which is Holland Park Elementary School. So there was trash being illegally dumped. Students were walking through the alley to get home to and from school. Um, so we came up with this idea where our young people who have lost loved ones to gun violence wanted to create a space where they can go to for yoga, meditation. Um, that they can also go to care, to care for it. As you see, the mayor came out, he got his hand dirty. This was a huge project supported by Be More Beautiful and Philanthropy Tank um, for our young people to create this space. So this is a space where we go to for healing. We also go to this space um, to remember our loved ones. We have personalized stepping stones with messages on here to our loved ones. So when uh, Christian data says that it creates a calming and a relaxed space. That's very true. Um, because when we go there, some of our young people go there even without me. This is a space where they can go on their own. Um, we were able to get a material grant to get all these supplies to do this stuff. And, um, you know, they go here after school sometimes and just sit. If they're having a rough day, their parents go there. Um, the community utilizes it all the time. Um, the, the anniversary of their loved ones, they'll go there. Some people don't like going to the cemetery, but they find this to be a peaceful space to help relax them. So this is a space where they go. Um, and I also, um, there's been data put out there that it helps reduce this crime. You can go to the next, uh, to the next slide, as you see the little flowers and the kids, these are actually children who've been impacted by violence, who are here um, creating this space. Um, and then us adults, of course, we come and support it and um, help them to organize. Um, so yes, and these are just people that came out. It was really huge. You can go over to the next one. Um, and then we have philanthropy tank, winter here, over on the right with the two hearts in her hand, actually lost her mother and father to gun violence. Um, and as you can see in the right-hand corner here, this is the way um, the garden looked prior to us 
actually um, beginning to uh, transform it. And then if you look around, you'll see the difference in how it looked after we begin uh, providing services in the garden. But crime prevention through environmental design is one of the big things um, that we focus on. And what that does is if, a, if people see that there's someone who really care about the community and they are caring for the community, they're less likely to uh, commit violence. There was a study done in, I think, Chicago um, on that as well, that actually um, crime was reduced by over 50%, am I right? Um, in the areas where, uh, I don't have it in front of me right now, but the crime was reduced significantly in the areas that show that someone cared for the area. Because if it looks like someone don't care where I'm from, if you're okay, I'm just going to keep throwing trash. But, you know, when I was coming up, you know, people throw trash where they see trash. If they see that it's a clean area, then they're also less likely to throw trash there. They're also less likely to commit crime there because it's just the environment that we're living in. And a lot of times, people in Baltimore City and my community, we come become a product of our environment. So if you see trash and you see filth and you see grass all over the place. This is how high the grass actually was at one point when we came back the second time. The first time we came, it looked like that down there in the bottom where everything that kind of died out. And the second time when we came, if you look in the middle and you see how high that trash is, is up to the table. Uh, we actually painted. You can see the uh, bright, pretty colors of the paint that we put out there. Um, you know, it was older wood. We repaired some of the wood. Uh, put new uh, soil down um, and everything. And it's been a, a beacon of light for the community. Um, the community utilizes this. They go around there on their own. They send me photos every day um, and just get a sense of peace from being able to go to a garden, a safe space um, that we can call our own um, and our survivors it's important to us to have these. And we would love to place more gardens. And I want to shout out Natasha and Brandy because they are amazing with helping us to keep our young people engaged. Because a lot of times, like Christian said, when you come into our community and you're expecting something about young people, one thing for sure, like she said, bring food, bring stipends, you know, not that, you know, because you never know what a young person is going through. They may not have food at home. They may not have a way to pay their phone bill. They may not have a lot of necessities. So everything my young people do, I make sure they get a stipend because it's very important. And I'm very, very passionate about making sure that my partners understand that uh, when they call on my young people, be prepared to give them a stipend because just like we want to get paid for our work as adults, they want to get paid and I teach them to value their work um, and, and they deserve it. They deserve it. They come on trainings, they get trained up, they do the work and they, you know, they deserve to be paid for their work just like us adults. And um, so as you see, this is some of the little flyers that we had out. I didn't know we had all of this stuff put on one thing, but if you can look on the right hand side, just some of the activities that we do actually this Saturday, we're coming back out for the first time this year um, to actually revitalize our garden from the winter, um, plant new flowers, put new soil down. We actually need to get someone out to kind of test the soil because we're seeing some, it's not as bad as you see it down here in the right-hand corner, it didn't get that bad over the winter for some reason. Probably because we were out there watering and everything all through the summer. But um, we noticed that it, the grass dries up a lot during the winter, like really, really bad. And then during the summer, it's so green. Like as you see some of the greening um, in the middle pictures, it's really light. But during the winter months, um, so we wanted to kind of test the soil to just see what's going on. So we wanted, if you guys could direct us to someone who can assist with that and would like to come out and test their soil just to see what's going on, we would be happy to have you. And is there any more slides to show, just to show pictures? And my, 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 my uh, presentation 
is just really small. And then if you look at the pictures here, these are some of our survivors and our young people who um, dominate. Grass goes dominant in the winter. Right. Yes. It just get really brittle. Um, it wasn't as bad as that first time I took them pictures of it. But it was like, I know it gets, it kind of dries up. But I was like, whoa, sometimes it looks, it gets really, really frail. So these are our young people that we work with, some community members. Mm -hmm. This is also James. If you see the, if you look to the right-hand corner at the bottom and you see the young man with the young lady, they have the bag. That's actually James who's on the call now. Um, so yeah, these are our young people. These are different occasions. These are not just one event. Um, where we go every Saturday to actually care for these gardens. And we actually take care of 17 lots um, during the spring and summer months. So we have a lot of young people who are engaged. They love to get outside. Um, and as far as the middle school children, I'm so sorry. I did not, I was not aware of that, that they're not getting out during the school years. Um, so that may be something we can also help with, uh, Joanne, uh, because I was not aware of that. We actually partnered with uh, Augusta Fell Savage a couple of times, which is one of the four schools who's directly across from our garden. And I was working on working with them on a cleaning and greening project where we go outside and they were planting a garden. So I would be happy to actually help in any way. And, and all of you are invited. Look, we always want people to come out and assist and work with our young people. And you know, if you know anything about gardening, Look, we need you. We would appreciate you. We, you know, we have a team and our young people lead. They lead in their community. And I'm excited to work with the group of young people that we work with because they're leading. We have a couple ones graduating out this year. Uh, once they, they finish high school, we try to help them go to college, encourage them to go to college, help them fill out job, I mean, applications for college. Um, to continue on in their life. So we, we're hoping that they take a career path um, um, in the environmental field. So we do have a couple of young people who are interested in that. So I'm excited about that because this work also helps them to develop, uh, you know, a career path in environmental. So um, thank you. you. You can go to the next slide if there's any more. Yeah, and this is just us out here kicking it on the field next to the garden. You can continue, go to the next one. Yeah, and these are some of the other areas we clean up. We also clean up on Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, the garden is 1420 West Lafayette, 1406 to 1420 West Lafayette. And then Pennsylvania Avenue. This is the field up there where we clean and cut the grass up there. Um, and then we also, you know, we recycle trash. Um, we practice stormwater management, which helps to reduce uh, pollution from going into the Chesapeake Bay um, to save our fish, um, to also prevent our communities from being um, flooded. Um, it also helps the environment. So we do practice stormwater management. We plant native plants. Um, so we're excited because we're going to be planting some native plants this summer. And these are some of the young people that help lead these initiatives. And um, like I said, they're, they're, they're honored. They, they love what they do. Um, and they're very, very good at it. And that's why Natasha recommended my group for Christian, because the young people that we work with, they are leaders. They are not followers. And we build them up to lead in their community. And you can go to the next one. And that is it. And thank you all so much. If anyone have any questions um, for me, please feel free to ask away. <laughs> and Lisa, it looks like you have someone who can test the soil in the chat box. Are you serious? Okay, let me go to the show. Okay, well, please <laughs> get that information. Awesome. Thank you. James, can you get that information for us? Because I'm having a whole time trying to scroll, scroll up. Let me say, all right. Thank you, wonderful work. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Could you type the grass? Like, could be this type of grass. James, can you get that link for me too? I'm glad James is on. Is James still on here? Yes, James is here. Yes. Can you get that link? She was, somebody sent the link. 
Yep. Oh, yeah, he already on it. it. Thank you, James. He said he's going to write the information down for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, but this was amazing. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more uh, research with my young people. Um, also, if you guys have any uh, resources where we can do research, and I, will, I, I would like the young people to kind of lead it. Uh, because a lot of the work we do is youth-led. 85% of the work that Let's Throw Our Baltimore do, the youth run it. Like, they don't play no games. James is one of our leaders, and um, he runs the Gun Violence Prevention Committee. Um, so he worked with young people to divert them away from violent crime, and he's the director of that committee, each committee that we work on. We also have a Human Trafficking Committee, and uh, a, a safe and dating. We also covered uh, safe dates. Um, so I'm excited that we have a captain that runs our workforce development committee, which is our uh, landscaping committee. So we have a whole committee of young people who run the landscaping. And um, they, they're out there every Saturday. And yeah, thank you so much. Audrey has a question. Yes, Audrey. Did you have a question or use hands still up for the first time? Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Um, but I, you are doing an amazing job. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's, I mean, we do stuff like that too, but it's just good to know that, you know, other people are doing it with the young people, but that's an amazing, you're doing an amazing job. I'm loving your pictures. And I just want you to know, I'm, I'm sorry, I might steal some of your ideas. Okay. Go ahead. No. <laughs> you can steal the ideas because I love it's not called stealing. You're re-implementing them. And I love when my ideas are being re-implemented because what happens is, um, and but but like as far as like the healing garden, what we try to ask people is to try to work together on that type of stuff, kind of like what Christian said. You don't want to kind of um if you find somebody that's creating a healing space like that try to work together because it makes us powerful and makes us stronger when we work together as a team. I have like 200 partners. This is a perfect example. My partners over um, at Baltimore Brothers, I take my young people over there every Wednesday to get training because I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I want to help strengthen theirs. They needed young people and they had a program and I have 30 young people I bring every Wednesday to get manhood training, you know, and it makes us stronger. And a lot of people are reaching out to us because they see that we can work together. And that's the that's the most powerful thing about that. But yes, always re-implement. I don't have a problem with it because guess what? It shows that the work that we're doing, other people are following suit. And we're like huge. We're all over the news. Google our name, like the news follow us around, follow me on social media. They pop up at all of our events and all of that good stuff. So a lot, you know, everybody knows the work Let's Throw Out Baltimore is doing. The council members, the mayor, everybody comes out to all of our events. They, they're always really huge because they're just amazed of how our young people stay so engaged. But thank well, you. I'm going to have to meet you one day because you are coming into the Oliver Center, which I am out of. Oh, you're in the Oliver <laughs> Center team. Awesome. Yes. So you I might have I might have seen you come through. So yes. I'm my sister Audrey in the Oliver Center in the Oliver community. Yes. So, um, so take my number and please oh, reach out to me. The Oliver Center is where we go every Wednesday. So I will, yeah. So I'll come through one Wednesday and okay. meet with you and we can collaborate. Yes. That's the way I, our home base is to work with the young people working. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Yes, Amen. I will put Thank my, you. I will put my number in the chat as well. Amen. Thank you. And you sorry, y'all. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I love collaboration. Amen. It makes us so much powerful. Yes. Okay, great. Got it. Thank right, so you. That's no more questions. Um, did I answer everybody's question in the chat? I would like to partner with you, please. Oh, yes. James, can you get Saloni's um, email? Yes. Thank you. So, then I hope I pronounced it right. Salani, thank you so much. Yes, let's do some work together. I love it. It makes us more powerful. Let's do it. Yes. And we can do work in your community. We can do work in my, both the communities. And that's the way we normally, like, I help you in your community. We're helping each other. 
And it just yeah. makes us stronger. It makes yeah. us so much stronger. And I want to offer my condolences to you um, and to your, your group. Um, because one Thank of the you. things I also do is, um, well, we do it as a separate piece. Because I also, I actually lost my son three years ago. So I, I ministered to uh, you know, mothers and things like that. But also at the same time, dealing with my grandchildren. They're okay. Because, um, you know, we've been working. But the, the, as you say, the garden. It's yes. amazing how, you know, they just kind of, you know, I, I'm going to say the stress release of uh, throwing rocks, banging rocks, picking up rocks, whatever it is, or digging in dirt. It, yes. it really, it, it really does something to to calm the, the spirit. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Know, and it, was it the gun violence? If you don't mind yes, me, it I'm yes, so it was. I'm so sorry, yes, and I know was. that's hurtful. We definitely please yeah. take my number. <laughs> please yes, take yes. my number because I work with a lot of. I have resources for survivors. I do a lot with survivors. Like I, because we we have to, you know, a lot of people don't understand why the grief lasts forever but we learn to cope with it but we never stop grieving so it's important that you surround yourself with people who understand so i'm glad that you say you work with a lot of our mothers we have an annual event every september the last saturday to honor our loved ones through poetry singing dancing everything i would love for you and your mom to come out and we would love to put a heart at the garden for your son this is a citywide garden it's not a lisa thing it's not just a sand sound thing this is for anyone who lost someone to violence to put um and we'll put a heart-shaped stepping stone in the garden we have 60 now with like 70 more on the way hopefully they'll be here by saturday um so we would love for you um, please take my number and, and we'll put a heart at the Healing Memorial Garden. You can go on your own there. You don't have to be with me, you know, as a space. Uh, we're we're, we're going to go back to caring for it. Starting this Saturday, I gave the youth uh, the winter off, but we will begin caring for the garden again starting this Saturday, every Saturday. They had about, they get three months off. So we did it all the way up to, actually, we did it all the way up to the week before Christmas. Um, because we had our last event there the last Saturday in December for Christmas. So we do all of our events there. We have all the fields around it. We care for it. Not only do we care for the garden, we care for the fields surrounding the garden as well. There's other fields there. So please take my number. I yes. got it. I appreciate it. If not, I'm going to catch you on a Wednesday. But yes, this is a, a beautiful, great idea. I love mm. the uh, idea. So I'd love to talk with you and Again, uh, to get more ideas from you. Thank Amen. You. Thank yes. you. I, I, I thank y'all for listening for to us too, everybody. <laughs> yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm here for it. Any way I can help. Um, so the garden address for Saturday is 1420 West Lafayette Avenue. Yes, and we'll be there at 4 p.m. We do a lot of stuff in the afternoon because we work around you schedule. Everything we do is after four mainly um, because we try to do stuff around schedules where youth can still do things that they need to do on Saturday morning. They can sleep in late. We don't want them to go to school all week long and then tell them get out to bed at nine in the morning and come out and garden. They love coming out in the afternoon. Plus the sun is going down. Um, and we have a 97 cent retention rate. I mean, we keep our youth. They come back. And the way we do things, I believe, is the reason why our young people continue to come back. So... Yeah, three percent is is what we trying to we gonna grab back hold of them too. And that's out of ninety-eight young people that we work with. Thank you. Thank you, Georgia. All right, I guess that's it. Our time is up. I wanna be respectful of y'all time. I think that's it for me. Oh, um Joanne has one question. I don't know if you have any time, Lisa. Oh but, no, yeah, um, I have time. If, if whoever needs to leave, I guess, wasn't it over at seven? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. So if you need um, to jump off, you can. I appreciate y'all, but whoever needs to stay and ask me any questions, I can stay. I don't have anything to do. Thank Lisa, you. Thank you. Just want to give you hugs and kisses. It was great uh, to see you and keep up the good work and wonderful to meet thank everyone. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs> Thanks for um, hanging out for a little bit um, yeah. more and um, loving your work. 
I'm wondering mm -hmm. what is your, um, if you're entering a, a new community or a new area, what's your ideal way of engaging youth in a, a new area or a new community? Um, so I would, part, first of all, if I come into a new community, I'm gonna partner with the people who's already working in that community. And um, I'm not just gonna come in a community and say, oh, I'm here. Let us, you know, and I'm going to reach out. I want to have an event that brings the people out. So that way that we can, with food, food always bring people out. Look, pull them grills out, the moon bounces, right? And get the young people out, um, the music, you know, and just have like a meet and greet day. But partnering with the people who are already in the communities, reaching out to the schools, sending out a flyer to the school so they can send it out to the residents in that community to actually get them out engaging. And, um, you know, my really, I think what I've been through in life and because I'm so real, you know what I mean? With the young people, um, they are attached and I'm attached. Like they help me heal, I help them heal, right? And is you can get youth out, but if you can't keep, keep youth engaged, that's another problem, right? You can get them out easily. That's not a problem, but keeping them engaged is the thing. And I see a lot of people struggle with that. And um, um, I mean, unfortunately, that's not one of the things we struggle with. We are really good with getting youth and keeping them. Um, so keeping them engaged, I see, is a problem that people struggle with because they want youth to put on this facade. Let youth be themselves, but train them to be the best them that they can be, right? But allow them to be them but you train them to be the best version of them. And when I learned to change me and stop trying to control everything the youth is doing, we had a better relationship because me saying, don't do this, don't do this, do this, do this, do this this way, don't do this this way, it's, 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 it ruins the relationship and the trust. When I learned to change me and say, you know what, I'm gonna let the youth just do their thing, they're doing a great job, you know, allow them to be themselves, them authenticated selves, um, it helps strengthen the relationship um, and the trust, and they stay around, you know? So, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, that, that sounds great. Um, it's just uh, thinking um, my, um, my community association's current president, and um, I think the tweens and teens have a difficult time of a space that they are that's open and welcome to them, that they become citizens of the world and, and learn how to become adults and interact with each other, interact with adults too. Uh -huh. And um, and then sometimes those gaps where they don't have those safe spaces then leads to you know, mischievous things that yeah. an adult brain might think of consequences and the youthful brain doesn't necessarily think of those consequences. No, I value that. And I thank you. One thing I noticed that where we can strengthen, we need more people, adults, right, <laughs> on our team, um, like to, to help with the work that we're doing. We need more adults um, that care, you know, enough to say, look, you know, let's, let's work together. Let's work with this team. Let's help strengthen. Let's work with these young people and build these youth up and make sure they have all the resources they need to thrive in life. Because we have all of these young people, but then you have the adults giving up and the youth not, you know? And so that's where we could be strengthened as a group. I feel like because we, I mean, even as adults, we're kind of just encouraging the youth and working in the background, but we need more of that. Um, we need more people to just be on a team because I'm here and there everywhere. I hired an assistant and I'm still all over the place. I have meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting and this, that, you know, and I'm doing, I'm driving, I'm getting transportation, I'm, I'm the executive director, I'm doing this, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do the paperwork, I'm trying to do the statistics, and I'm, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm on, you know, so that's where we can strengthen as a group, I believe, um, you know, we're looking for people who would like to partner on, you know, just helping us technically, you know what I mean, technical support, administration support, um, if we can come out and help you with hands-on support, you know, and bringing the young people out and engaging the young people. Like, you know, it's about helping each other. And that's what it's about. Thank Even you if so you much say, for your work. Yeah, thank you. No, I appreciate it.
That's how you built them. That's where you built them teams and them partnerships up. And that's how everything winds up playing out for the good. Okay. All right. So that's it. Thank you so much, Morgan. And thank you, everyone. Um, amazing event. Please keep them coming. I'm not from Baltimore, but have been inspired so much for you. everything happening here, Lisa. You can, oh, good night. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, James, for hanging on and getting all that information out the chat. Did you get the information out the chat, James? Thank you. Yes, I did. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Morgan, for having me. Everybody have a good night. I'm gone now. Oh, thank See you, Lisa. Good night. <laughs> Thanks, Sasha and Brandy. I love y'all. <laughs> oh, I'll pass on their love. Your love.